So let me guess, you cobbled together some time travel tech, and the first thing you thought about doing was trying to kill Hitler. What a shock. It's not like every other time traveler before you has tried to do the exact same thing. Sadly for you, the universe is not a big fan of people messing up the timeline. 99% of the time, time travelers tend to die horribly as they are scattered across space-time. But every once in a while, one of you gets shunted to another universe, one that is hopefully similar to your own. In this case, you got your wish, in a way, dropped into a universe close to your target, at least time-wise. However, the history of this universe is a bit different from your own. So history as you know it started to shift around 1944, when the Manhattan Project was in full swing in New Mexico. Headed by Oppenheimer, the scientists and engineers there were working to weaponize the power of the atom, and in doing so, create the first nuclear weapon. And, like in your universe, it worked. The nuke exploding, and Oppenheimer quoting his oh-so-famous line. However, unlike in your universe, the nuclear blast had an additional effect besides, you know, the massive destruction and horrible radiation. The blast opened a rift in space. As bizarre as that was, there was still a war going on. The US military finally had their weapon, and they immediately put it to use against their primary target, Germany. The United States threatened the Germans with the bomb, and when that didn't work, the US nuked Dresden with Fat Boy on the 12th of March 1944. Despite the destruction, the Germans refused to yield, so the Allies were forced to go ahead with Operation Overlord, the full-on assault on German territory. As all of this was happening, the rift was still there in New Mexico, being its mysterious self. Actually, I should probably say rifts, because when the Allies nuked Dresden, a new rift was formed in the center of that once proud city. The US was cautious with their rift. It got its brightest minds together at Los Alamos Labs, securing the facilities behind the strongest barriers they could manage, and renaming the entire place Area 51, the facility becoming the center of all research around this strange phenomenon. The Germans were far less cautious. Hitler was excited about the occult nature of the rift, and insisted on pushing the limits of safety, hurrying his people to craft radiation-proof bunkers, and began studying the rift as soon as possible. This area formed the heart of research on the rift, as well as an industrial facility, to immediately craft anything that resulted from that research. From the rifts, both sides came upon two discoveries. The first was a discovery of strange energies emanating from the rift, the exotic particles having an effect on both biology and certain elements. In the case of its effects on biology, this energy paved the way for several biological applications that could change the DNA of living creatures. As for the elements, it was discovered that the energies had a strange effect on lithium, iron, and silicone, leading to very effective electrical circuits and greatly accelerated research into computational processing technology. The second discovery from the rift was the presence of radio waves. Radio waves that contained messages from whatever resided on the other side. Most of the messages were unclear or beyond human comprehension, but every once in a while, scientists were able to decipher a scientific principle or theory. These tidbits allowing each nation to achieve huge leaps in scientific research and industry, the results of which produced devices that would become known as Rift Tech. What's funny, though, is that each nation didn't derive the same sort of rift tech from those messages. If they weren't at war, they would have figured out that the messages coming from each rift were slightly different from each other, each providing differing scientific principles to each side. Why that was, only the beings on the other side knew. The mysterious messages had some significant effect on the relations of nations and the Allies and Axis. For the Allies, despite many pleas to share the rift messages, the US was hesitant to share for quite a while which eventually pissed off Stalin enough that he soon declared the United States an enemy of the motherland, ending his alliance with the Allies, and making it known that the Soviet Union alone would end the war. As for the Axis, Hitler, despite his misgivings, knew that their side was in a much more desperate situation, and chose to give his Japanese allies immediate access to the Rift messages. As you can guess, this Rift tech was mainly focused on developing tools of war, a war that has continued for three years since the opening of the Rift, and it doesn't look like it is ending anytime soon. I could go over all that has happened over the last three years, like the splitting of Italy into two warring nations for example, but it's a lot, and I'm not in the mood to be a historian. I'm sure it's documented somewhere if you're really curious. What you should know is that each nation has developed their own version of Rift Tech that is as unique as the nation that created them. That's not to say that there isn't more conventional weapons in use. The creation of Rift Tech is a lengthy and intensive process, 
which means a majority of the armed forces in any nation still use the more conventional vehicles and weapons you might have seen in the movies and documentaries of your time. But alongside them are more advanced weapons of mass destruction that are only possible with the advent of Rift Tech. Some of this tech is common among all the nations. In each one you will find some form of advanced armors, weapons, and even vehicles, such as walkers, although each will be developed with the nation's preferred method of war in mind. For example, Russian walkers tend to be far more heavily armored than those of other nations, The Russians prefer their machines to be tough enough to take quite a few hits. But there is other rift tech that is generally only used by a particular nation. In the case of Germany, much of their development is focused on the biological. No nation unleashing as many biological horrors upon the world. There is the Toten Corps, which are troopers made by animating the dead. Yeah, you heard me right. Not sea zombies. There are the Shrek Wolfen, creatures formed from the merging of the DNA of humans and animals, the most stable being those made from the mixing of human and canine DNA, forming what are essentially werewolves. There are the Nock Jaeger, creatures formed from the mixing of DNA of reptiles, bats, alligators, and other creatures, horrifying bat-like creatures from your worst nightmares. As focused as they are on the biological, the Germans didn't skimp on developing unique machines, one of them being the Schwerfeld Projector, a gravity manipulation weapon capable of altering gravity in a localized area, basically crushing their targets under their own weight. For the United States, the messages from the Rift allowed for the famous scientist Nikola Tesla to design what became known as Tesla weapons. As you can guess, those weapons use electricity as a primary form of attack. Depending on how it's dispersed, it can be equally effective on both vehicles and troops, no matter how heavily they may be armored. Firefly Jump Pack Infantry are drawn from the elites of the paratroopers, their electrical jump packs allowing them to specialize in rapid advances to take ground, and hopefully keep it until conventional infantry and armor can relieve them. The US has also had a success in biological research. They recently started the Paragon program, a program that turns regular soldiers into superhumans. Unlike the Germans, the US is far more careful with its selection using a battery of tests to ensure that only the best candidates undergo the procedure, creating soldiers that despite having bodies far beyond mortal men, are still essentially human. Great Britain has made huge strides in computing over the last few years. Mathematician Alan Turing's computers allowing for the design of artificial intelligence, AI that comes in the form of automatons, 10 foot tall humanoid machines that are used to spearhead assaults and spare the lives of precious soldiers. And they have recently developed an automated mobile platform Having an artificial mind pilot a massive vehicle, wielding anti-tank guns and howitzers, seems like a poor idea to me, but you have to use whatever you can during a war, I guess. Although the British haven't been modifying soldiers like the United States has, that hasn't stopped them from doing it to man's best friend. Using Rift Tech, the British have bred dogs that are much stronger, faster, and smarter than more traditional breeds. These war dogs even able to bowl over heavily armored troopers and bite at their vital points. Although the Soviet Union was initially at a disadvantage due to their lack of access to Rift Tech, spies in German territory were soon able to steal some research, and even recordings of Rift messages from Dresden. With it, Soviet scientists were quickly able to create Rift Tech for Russian use. The Siberian terror squads, often called ghouls by those who face them, are unfortunate prisoners turned into monsters with essentially anti-freeze for blood. The transformation of making them immune to cold, and giving them a chilling touch that if you're lucky, will just give you frostbite, and if you're unlucky, will turn your blood into ice. Using the German Shrek Wolfen research, the Soviet Union have developed the Ursus Infantry, humans modified with bare DNA. Although much more powerful than their canine equivalents, they lack some of their control, so they are only really unleashed in highly contested areas, where the leadership isn't too worried about losing some of their infantry. And through their scientists parsing of the Rift messages, the Soviets were able to develop the Zukovoy Projector, a brutal sonic weapon. It utilizes ultra-low frequency sound focused into an energy pulse that behaves like a battering ram. Like the Germans, the Japanese were able to develop their own undead soldiers. The process to create these Shibito squads is similar to that of the Toten Corps, but much more streamlined, allowing the Japanese to not only increase the speed of their creation, but also expand the range of bodies they can use to do so. The Yurei Kogeki Tai or ghost attack squads are Japanese soldiers equipped with devices that can create a small field capable of phasing soldiers out of sync with the material around them, essentially making the soldiers capable of walking through walls. Despite its obvious advantages, it sees limited use since it only lasts a very short time, and it occasionally fails, 
usually when the soldier is sadly halfway through a wall. And all of that is just a sampling of the rift tech used on the battlefield, with more seeming to be developed every month as every nation aims to create the next horrible device to finally end the war. Well that's a good rundown I think. I would go into more details on the nations involved in the conflict, but I'm on a bit of a tight time Tim and I've really gotta go. What, did you think I would take you under my wing or something? Sorry friend, it's every failed time travel for themselves around here. Extra bit of advice though, don't tell anyone you're from an alternate future. With the war going on, any side will do anything they can to get any info inside your head, even if they have to open it up to do so. Anyway, good luck and uh, try not to die. Hey guys, this is Arvalanus and I want to thank you for watching this video on Conflict 47, taking place in an alternate World War II, where strange rifts in space brought about technologies that, well, significantly altered the war. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you really like it, please like, subscribe, comment, press the little bell so the universe knows that I post, and so hopefully more people can see my content. And if you really like it and you're inclined, please send a little money away to my Kofi or my Patreon account, the extra money gives you a chance to work on these stories I love. Anyway, thanks for listening slash watching, and uh, see you next time.